Welcome to The Tim Castle Show, where I sit down with courageous people doing inspirational things around the world. My journey so far as a best-selling author of Be The Lion, The Art of Negotiation, Momentum Sales Model, and The Art of Decision Making has taken me to some very interesting places. I truly believe that there are stories that we have locked up inside of us can help other people. And through those stories, we can transform the world. I'm sure you're ambitious, hungry, a go-getter, and you're looking for the latest strategies in how to become a high achiever and maintain that success and keep expanding. If that's you and that resonates, sign up for my newsletter, the School of Success newsletter, and I'll hit you with actionable ideas that you can put into play right away every single week. Let's go. Let's get into the episode. Today, we're going to talk about top 10 success habits for a world-class life. Because that's what we should be aiming for, folks, a world-class life, whatever that means to you. For me, it meant a life of freedom. That was the aim. 15 years has been about liberty and freedom and creating a life that I could exist in, in a way that I could show up as my fullest self. So top 10 success habits for a world-class life. And remember, we've got to define what a world-class life is for you. But whatever it is, whatever excites you, that's a world class life. Whatever you think that you would be doing if you weren't getting paid for it, right? For me, it's writing. I would keep writing if I wasn't getting paid for it. I'd keep doing these podcasts if I wasn't getting paid for it. I'd keep coaching if I wasn't getting paid for it. These are things that I love to do in my soul. I love to meet people. I love to hear their stories and I love to help them. So number one, you've always got to aim to do the best you can in every situation. And why is that? Well, it's because it raises your standard. And a lot of a world-class life is around the standard. So how we do anything is how we do everything. Therefore, we need to aim for the best. We need to aim for the best in every situation. We bring our best self to that situation and we're present. We don't try to multitask. We do the task at hand to the best of our ability at that time. And that's where we start to get quality. Quality both in the product that we're producing but also in the ideas that we have. If we start like basically picking and choosing when we will be our best, we're going to lose out. Why? Because we drop our standard. If we drop our standard in certain areas, it's a bit like the bu butterfly effect. There's a ripple effect. And you might not see it today. You might not see it tomorrow or week. But three months later, you'll see that you've dropped your standard in a whole area of your life. And remember, we're looking at a holistic world-class life here. So. We want to aim for our best. So we show up and we do our best and we have that intention to do our best in every single thing that we're doing. And that can help you, right? Because there are tasks that you're going to be doing this. There's, there's days where you get out of bed and you're just like, I have not got this in me. I do not want to do today. I am bored. But when you bring that mindset and it really is a mindset, it's an agreement within yourself to say, hang on, I'm going to do my best regardless. And you show up with that attitude and that standard, you're going to produce better results both mentally physically and what you produce as the outcome the next is about going after opportunity you don't wait for opportunities to come to you you don't hope and wish that they come it's great hope and wish love it but you can't just sit back and expect all the good things in life to show up on your doorstep you've got to go out and seize the opportunity like a hungry lion running across the plane you cannot sit back and just expect you've got to go out and create opportunities so you've got to go win big and you should have that attitude that's how you should approach life i am someone that wins big i see opportunities i go after them i take action on them i create them because often the really big opportunities they won't necessarily look like that when they come to you and if you don't have this skill as someone that's able to dig into things able to coax the opportunity out to find the opportunities if you're not going after it fiercely approaching it like really aggressively going after opportunities and creating and putting yourself in the unknown in those situations to create the life you want you'll miss the big ones because the big ones don't always look that shiny until you polish them until you clean them off and then you realize hang on this is the biggest opportunity of my life they don't look like that on the surface all the time the biggest opportunities so you have to do some work and it's having that attitude having that attitude of we win big i go after my opportunities i create my opportunities it gives you a sense of control 
which is awesome, right? You want that control. You want that confidence. Because if you're someone that seizes opportunity, you know you're going to do what it takes to make it happen. And so there's a there's an air of confidence in that. There's also an air of excitement. And it's that excitement and that balance between excitement and confidence that helps you push out of your comfort zone, which is what's needed to be able to create that bigger, better life, that world-class life. Because currently, the life you have if you want to think about the results you're getting, that's a result of the habits you're currently doing. So if you want more of the same, keep doing more of the same. But if you don't and you want to expand, you're going to have to change something. And so by having this mentality of someone that goes out and wins big and seizes opportunity and goes and discovers new opportunities and creates them, you're forcing yourself to change. You're forcing what your current results are to change. And as a result, you're going to get a more expanded and fuller life. It's going to be richer. So don't wait, but also don't think about opportunities as just small. Right? Don't go for the next linear thing. Think about exponential gains. Think about what it would be like to 10x. Really go to that place of impossibility and really play with those ideas. Because when we think exponentially, it's going to force you to have to change. If we think linearly, we well, already know how to do that. And things we know how to do are not exciting and they're routine. So you just want more of what you've already got, a 10%, 20%, 100% improvement. It's just more of doing the same. And you already know how to do that. But if you want to radically change, if you want to get exponential growth, if you want to 10x, that's where it gets super exciting because it's going to force you to think differently, to think in new ways that you don't even know right now. Because the, the actual idea of you getting that 10x goal the actual when you actually look at it it's going to it's actually what you don't do that's going to create that because there's a lot of what you're doing that won't get you to that 10x goal do you see what i mean it's it's there's a lot of what you're currently doing that's not going to get you because you're not getting it already so it's just it's already producing the results that you're getting therefore you need to cut that out and you need to focus on the stuff that can actually get you that 10x goal and that might be quite hard that might be things like not scrolling Instagram for two hours a day. It might be things like being consistent every single day and having that focus, that maniacal focus on what your objective is, even on the days that you don't want to do it. And that's where you've got to pull in that number one strategy of always doing your best. So this is all going to help you compound and build. But the main thing here is don't wait for opportunity. Go out and create it. Number four, seek to find the good in every situation. I think it was Wallace Wattles, who was the most successful man in America at the time, um, in the 19th century. Very, very successful man in terms of entrepreneurship and businesses, most, most wealthy. And if we define wealth as success, but he would always say, and that's good because, right? And he'd any situation, anything that had happened, oh, and that's good because. And then it would force himself, that sentence, beginning it like that, would force himself to find the good in the situation. So it's quite a clever way of playing a trick on yourself so that you then become that person that sees the good regardless of the adversity. Because adversity is going to happen. But if you can see the good in the situation, you see the seed of opportunity in it and you pounce on it and then you bring it to life. And that's the way you want to live regardless of it could be a good situation you see the good in it you see the good in it you see the good in it bad situation see the good in it see the good in it. you're training yourself to show up and see the good in every situation and by doing that you're bringing more of the good into your life just just for a function of how you are training your mind that's insane right it's not insane that's the wrong word that's beautiful that's skillful that's clever that's smart and a lot of that gets lost in today's teachings on how to be successful, I feel. I feel that these are some of the very fundamental building blocks to building a world-class life. This is about attitude and you choosing to see the world in a certain way that's going to reflect that back to you, which is going to allow you to have more of what you want in your life. And you have that ability. It's all within your power. And you start training your mind as a habit. So this is good because, and you train your mind like that. Number five, don't chase or 
just create drama unnecessarily. It's a waste of energy. So if someone annoys you, someone cuts you off in traffic, someone honks at you, like whatever it is, don't create unnecessary drama. You do not have time to waste your time and energy, your precious value on explaining to some idiot why they were an idiot. It's just a massive waste of time. What you want to do, what you actually want to do is move on, forgive them and move on. Forget, look, okay, I've met an idiot today. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to move on because you have a, a purpose. You have a big mission in life. You have enough to be getting on with, with all the things we're going through today to build these habits. And one of those habits is not creating drama unnecessarily. So when we have that as a, as a value, as something as how we show up to the world, we get less drama in our lives. We get less people in our lives that are focused at taking us down. And that's very important because it's an easy habit to, to do. Right? It's easy to be someone that gets provoked easily by lots of little things. And what we're doing is we're undoing a lot of what we've got here. If we've got a lot of negative energy coming into our world, if we've got a lot of trouble, strife, grief, situations that are just annoying, frustrating, if we, if we are expanding our lives in that way and we've got these situations that keep seem to happen to us, it becomes part of our narrative and part of our story. That's not a great way to live. That's not world class. Because remember, you need to show up like a world class person. You need to be able to handle these situations as a world class person. And this can go in one of two ways. Either it can create you more wasted energy, more depletion, more frustration, more anger, more tension, or you can forgive that situation, smile, move on. And the whole thing disappears. That whole bubble of energy that you would have got yourself into disappears. The same thing goes for gossip. The same thing goes for telling your friend about that situation and bitching about them later. Just don't go there, right? And then you start creating a life that is world-class because by not going there, you're not giving that situation or that person power. So you're controlling your emotions and you're using the energy and the life force that you have within you to direct it at your biggest and most highest outcome. So you're giving the value, the place and the space to actually transform your life and do something better for everybody else, rather than depleting it on a situation that just has no good in it, that has no benefit to anyone in it. And ultimately, reduces you to a lower version of energy like at the frequency so you're not going to pick up good vibes that day when you're on that low frequency that you've been pissed off because some dude cut you off or swore at you or knocked into you or whatever it is or someone did something that they shouldn't have done forgive and move on forgive and move on because you're giving yourself a gift in that moment because you have things to do you really really do you have things to do and you want to live that world-class life the next is enthusiasm. I love enthusiasm. And I talk a lot about this in my sales books. Enthusiasm is the number one skill. When you can be enthusiastic and show up in life with enthusiasm, it can transform. So it's got this frequency, this energy to it. It's magnetism. It's magnetism. And you can start magnetizing situations in your favor just by the very being that you are. So when you show up with enthusiasm, with the intention of doing your best and seizing opportunities, you start getting these wins very early on in the day. And that's a great place to be. It's a very good habit to be able to cultivate enthusiasm, especially in environments and situations where enthusiasm is lacking, because it will help you stand out. And people with that same frequency that want that frequency will be attracted to you. And you can create amazing things in that scenario. Enthusiasm, can it's like a bridge. It can carry you over the chasm to the other side where other people just stay and look at how it can't be done. Enthusiasm can get you. Well, how could it be done? What else could we do? And that's what you need to get momentum. You need that enthusiasm in your life. So be an enthusiastic person about life because you've got things to do. You have a purpose. You have a passion. And you want to be around other people that are doing the same. That's where you level up. Enthusiasm is a great habit to cultivate. And something that you can default to, especially on days when you're not feeling like it. The, the killers out there, the people that are actually a weapon at this and giving a world-class life are able to cultivate enthusiasm in situations where others are not 
where they would normally default to a lower vibe and default to their lowest standard, like their talent, right? The talent is almost like your lowest, like you always, in under stressful situations, you go to the level of your habits. But if you have a habit of being able to cultivate enthusiasm in stressful and tough times, suddenly, who's going to find more opportunity in that? Who would you trust to steer the ship through a massive storm? The depressed captain who's looking at rocks as if they're going to sink the boat or the enthusiastic captain that's valiantly going there and is able to see the sunrise on the horizon is like we will get there let's go let's do this let's do that and he starts giving out orders to make progress who would you trust just remember that you are the captain of your own life you are the captain of your own life and therefore you're in that boat and sometimes you're in that boat in the storm so really remember that enthusiasm can be your friend. There's a habit here that you can cultivate to kick in, not only when things are good. And this comes back to point eight, point seven, point seven. Habit number seven, top successful things to build a world-class life. Get a plan. Because if things aren't going to plan, it's because you've gone off plan. And nine times out of 10, it's because the person themselves didn't have a plan. They may have a bigger vision, which is, I love having a bigger vision, but you've got to step it back through that. And you've got to break that down into its subsequent parts to then be able to activate and make the best of each day. So get a plan, get a plan around it. If you're feeling overwhelmed, get a plan, see where you currently are on that plan, draw it out. We're visual as humans, we're visual. So draw it out, get creative, book yourself into a hotel room if you need it for a night and just draw and put out post-it notes. I used to do this all the time with my books. Writing a book, it can be an overwhelming process. It can be super overwhelming, especially when you've not done it before. And you're like, hang on, I'm, I'm really in the know. I used to put post-it notes out of each chapter, of each idea, hundreds of ideas all over the walls, all over the mirrors, like whatever. So I could see it. I needed to see it and I needed to see how this fit together. And it's the same thing with you. If you have a plan, you have a vision of where you want to go, write out the different ideas of how you can get there and then theme them, group them together in themes and then put them in order. Say, well, we need to do these themes first. Or we need to do these tasks first to get to this level, to then get to this level, to get to this level, and then start breaking it down even more specifically. Have a plan. Okay, what can we do this week? What do we need to get done today? That plan starts to become your guiding roadmap to how you get success in life. So have a plan and default to that plan. And know that if you're off track, you've got to get a plan. Having a plan is great because it gives you that, that fundamental map to guide the ship to safety. And safety is freedom in this case. So it's a skill to be able to cultivate the plan about what you want and how you think you get there and, and sit down every single day and just brainstorm 20 ideas of how you can make it happen. If you get stuck, 20 ideas, 20 ideas, 20 ideas, because out of there, you just need one. You just need one idea to get a home run. And it's super possible. And getting the ideas, what you'll find is because you get these ideas and you take action on them, you start to get progress, you start to get momentum, you start to lift yourself out of the situation. So get a plan and then go out. Number eight, win that day, win that day, aim to win that day. You should aim to win each day. And remember, at the end of each day, reflect on the things that you did well and the things you didn't, because that's a constant feedback loop of improvement. So win the day, but win it by getting up early and getting some wins through the door very early, whether it's going for a run, going to the gym, drinking a liter of water, recording a podcast, writing a book, whatever it is, journaling, meditating, meeting someone for coffee that you wouldn't normally meet, networking, growing your network, growing your business, whatever it is. Get that plan and then win the day because the plan is going to inform how you can win the day. And then you're building the habit of being a winner every single day. So you wake up, you're already a winner. How cool is that? I win the day. I've already won it. 6.15 a.m. right now. I've already won it. I've already done three things that make me a winner. I've already had three wins. So you're reinforcing that identity because this is a game of self-identity here. And we're coming, we're building up to, to point 10. And I'll explain why in a minute, but the habits that you're forming create your self-identity and your self-identity is the key. So you want to have a habit of, of reinforcing 
that you're a winner. And these can be small wins. They don't have to be big wins. People spend too long really just focusing on huge, huge wins instead of just remembering that they've got daily wins and they can get five big wins every day and feel like a winner. And that's going to put them in a position as the identity of someone who is a winner. And then they're going to win more. Just pure psychology. You're going to win more because you see yourself as someone who wins. And you're going to go out and find ways to win. So really win the day. Start strong. Get up early. 5, 6 a.m. Don't make excuses. And do something that will make you feel like a winner. Even if it's for 20 minutes. It will make you feel like a winner. And you'll have won. And then you go into a day and everything after that, everything after 9 a.m., you're suddenly like, I've already won. Whatever happens now in my day, I've already won. So then you go into those big, those bigger wins where they could be big opportunities, those big client meetings where you could land a big client for your business, those big pitches, whatever it is in life, those big mountains we're climbing. And you've got these five wins pushing you, propelling you. You've already got jet fuel and you're ready to go. So win the day. Stay connected. Number nine, stay connected. Remember, there's a universal energy. There's a higher power here. You need to focus inward, not outward. So stay connected to your intuition because it's telling you something. Stay connected to random thoughts that come in, like those sparks of ideas, those penny drop moments, those moments of inspiration where you feel guided. Really stay connected to that divine inspiration because it's telling you something. It's guiding you because it's there. And don't get lost. It's very easy today especially with the amount of distractions and notifications and pings and all these things that are happening on our phones to get distracted, to get off course. So stay connected, go inward, create time to go inward and just be with yourself and ask questions of yourself and know that the answers will come. And if you believe in a higher power, as I do, remember to put in time to really connect to your higher power to really get into that universal energy, to really understand the gravity that all situations are not impossible. There's a lot of possibility there and you just need to get into that flow and that rhythm, especially when you're going through a hard time. Lean into it. And number 10, your standard, right? The person that you want to become. You've got to act as the person you want to become today. It all goes back to your standard of who you are and your self-identity. And when you start behaving as the person you want to become today, you bring the future to you, you start showing up as that person, that world-class person, world class person. This isn't about creating a world-class life in some random time in the future. This is about living a world-class life today and for every day forward. So think of the person that you want to become and what they would be doing in that world-class life and start doing those things today. Start showing up as that person today. Start approaching situations, whether they're difficult or not, as that person start handling things with a higher standard. Raise your standard up and start living at this level. This is about self-identity. It's about self-transformation. And these habits will help you do that and reinforce that new self-identity. And within not a long time, you'll start showing up in situations automatically because this is about the subconscious mind. This is about what your subconscious knows as you as an individual. So when you change your self-identity and you raise your standard, and that can go for every aspect of your life, it can go for your workouts, your health, your standard around health, your standards around financial, your standards around your friendships, your relationships, your significant other, your standards around yourself, your hygiene, your thinking, negative thoughts don't want them we eradicate them like your standard around what's possible can't go for a run now it's raining can you of course you can can't do this it's something the traffic can't do this we're late can you get there in time have you tried like the standards around what's possible there's a standard for every area of your life and you need to look at that standard and reflect upon it and say is this high enough does this reflect a world-class life standard does this reflect the person that I want to become? And if not, change it instantly. Be and show up as that person you want to become today. And there you have it, folks. That's the top 10 success habits for a world-class life. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.
And that's a wrap. Thank you for sharing and rating this show. It helps us reach other people. If you're ambitious, which I know you are because you're listening to this show, I've got three courses out that you can take and elevate your skills around sales, negotiation, and personal transformation and that identity piece of finding your purpose and knowing how to take action courageously going after your dreams. So get stuck into it. The link are in the show notes. And until next time, believe it is possible. Take that message and that energy into your life and just go for it. Let's go.